endangered species. Facing the threat of a sixth mass extinction, conservation groups around the world are working to protect the lives of elephants both in captivity and in the wild. I've been in love with elephants since I was three years old, but as a graduate student in Appalachian Studies, I wanted to look at conservation from both regional and global perspectives, looking to explore connections from Thailand to Tennessee. In December of 2016, I journeyed to the northern highlands of Chiang Mai, Thailand to spend a week volunteering at Elephant Nature Park. As a rehabilitation and retirement home, over 70 elephants live the rest of their lives free from the hooks and chains of their past. In Asia, elephants are beaten into submission through a process called pajan. By tying up the trunk, tail, and four legs of the elephant, Trainers, known as mahouts, break the spirits of the terrified elephants to prepare them for docile lives in the tourism industry. The Pajan process is largely unknown to tourists, so raising awareness is a key component of Lech Chilert's conservational work. Through social media campaigns and a comprehensive volunteer program, Elephant Nature Park is spreading the message, imploring tourists to boycott circuses, feeding of street begging elephants, and any program that offers elephant rides. Founder of Elephant Nature Park, Lech Chilert, advocates for the elephants, but she also mitigates the problems conservation poses for humans. She provides jobs for the members of the community, builds them schools and temples for their children, buys produce from local farmers, and uses ecotourism to raise awareness. Elephant Nature Park is causing a paradigm shift in the treatment of elephants and the people who live with them. But back home in Appalachia, how can conservation help a species that is not even endemic to the continent? In America, the story is different, but elephants still bear the brunt of the abuse. Until recently, hundreds of elephants traveled the United States in circuses and faced cruel treatment at zoos. Here. Elephants also had their spirits broken so that millions of Americans could watch them perform. Circus posters promised anthropomorphic elephants, and the big top delivered. One solution is the Elephant Sanctuary in Tennessee, a 2,700-acre retirement home for 11 Asian and African elephants in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. The elephants are not available to the public, but the sanctuary capitalizes on distance learning programs, a downtown discovery center, and a popular volunteer program to educate and engage the public. We are a retirement home for elephants retired from exhibition and performing. Um, we have 2,700 acres here of Middle Tennessee wilderness where the elephants are able to just sort of relax and, and do what they like and live a, um, a retired life, a life where they don't have to be anywhere at any certain time. They can socialize, they can have elephant companions, they can explore. The, the sanctuary itself, the elephant habitat, is, is not open to the public. Um, and the reason for that is, is actually really simple. To go back to what I said earlier, these elephants are retired and they're retired from very public lives. These elephants have uh, been on exhibit at, at zoos. Many of them come from a performing background in the circuses and fairs and carnivals and, and that sort of stuff. So our agreement with their, um, with their, the, the owners, the people that brought them here, is that once the elephants retire to the sanctuary, that public part of their life is behind them. They, you know, they're retired from the, from the spotlight and the stage, and they're able to just relax in something that is hopefully very similar to the um, to the wild here in uh, here in Middle Tennessee. So uh, we've decided that that is probably the, what is best for these elephants and part of uh, part of the best care for them. Uh, however, we have live streaming LE cams, uh, HD cameras that are located throughout the sanctuary habitat. Now in 2017, we have the ability using um, Microsoft's in education and the Skype in the classroom program. Uh, and other uh, web-based technologies where literally we're able to beam the sanctuary out to any place, anywhere in the world that has uh, an internet connection. What about, what do you call those two white things that are poking out of the front of this elephant's, uh, this elephant's face? Does anyone know? 
Now those tusks, those teeth start growing all the way at the back of the elephant's jaw and they grow all the way out and they'll keep growing um, the entire time that the elephant is alive and they use those tusks to dig, to pull down branches like you see here, um, to scrape bark off of trees. We have um, college students um, such as our wonderful friends at, at Appalachia State University uh, that send down groups for multi-day volunteer placements as part of their alternative uh, uh, service experience or alternative break programs. And so those students come and they spend four or five days working with us. And it's sort of the same, um, the same guidelines. They're helping out with any number of, of manual labor projects. Um, and having uh, those volunteers here, having our volunteer day uh, people here, it allows us to check a lot of stuff off of our to-do list. We know from volunteers that have been here in the past that um, having the experience of being here, working alongside us, uh, learning as they go, that those people um, are much more likely to form a much longer connection with the Elephant Sanctuary. And those are folks that are gonna remain um, connected with us for, uh, for a very long time because they have this first person uh, experience of contributing service and, and volunteer time to, to draw upon. At Appalachian State University, I talked to two of the student leaders who volunteered at the Elephant Sanctuary in Tennessee as part of their alternative service experience over spring break. This program fills every single year because people love elephants, because they want to see them. Um, I think a lot of people want to just be able to like, touch their trunk or something like that. Um, so we definitely try and establish from the start that it's not about just seeing them and interacting with them, um, that it's the service, whether indirect or not, that really matters. We were doing a lot of maintenance, a lot of ground maintenance. We were, uh, we were prepping uh, like recreational um, enrichment. Uh, tools, I guess, for the elephants, uh, which were given to them later, and actually given to them when we were there, which was fantastic to see. So there are a lot of tasks, um, such as raking leaves and pulling vines off fences that they need people to do, um, and they can't exactly staff people to do that, so the volunteers are so important for those small jobs. You know, the service you do as a volunteer is important, but um, on top of that, what you take away is good as well. So if you can tell, you know, I don't know, a family member or a friend about what exactly you saw and what your thoughts and opinions are, I think the sanctuary really wants that to be um, talked about outside. Volunteering is just one way that students in Appalachia are making a difference. Dr. Rebecca Witter teaches a conservation and development class that promotes the human dimension of wildlife conservation, promoting a dynamic view of ecosystems and all of the creatures within them. There's good reason to think that we are entering, have entered the sixth mass extinction. The difference this time, whereas other mass extinctions, is that it's caused primarily by humans. I think part of the role of education is to thicken the plot for conservation, that it's, it's actually brings in a lot of social, political, and economic dimensions that need to be at the center of the conversation, that aren't add-ons, but that in order to understand how to um, practice conservation, we need to understand these social dimensions. So that's part of the challenge. So I, I, I like to have the opportunity to, for students to reflect critically about our, our ideas, although well-meaning, especially when they're well-meaning, the right thing really for species, for ecological systems. So what is the future of conservation? On almost every continent on Earth, elephants face threats from population growth to elephant riding, but organizations like Elephant Nature Park in Thailand and the Elephant Sanctuary in Tennessee are fighting back, focusing on the value of education, public outreach, eco-volunteerism, and a community-based natural resource management. In Appalachia, the Elephant Sanctuary in Tennessee plays a major part in global conservation efforts by using their work to raise awareness about elephants in the captivity and in the wild. This past year alone, they collaborated with elephant conservation projects in Kenya, South Africa, France, Brazil, Thailand, and India. By linking communities and creating a vast network of knowledge about conservation, elephants have the potential to survive the issues at hand, ensuring they will roam the earth for generations to come.
As humans, it is our job to protect the other species we share the earth with. After all, we are all just walking each other home.